The Last Runaway by Tracy Chevalier. Character Themes and Symbols. The characters' names are often telling, giving insight into the characters. The book is written in third person, limited to Anna's perspective. This means that although it is not in first person, we only know Anna's thoughts and opinions as revealed by the third person narration. Think about how this affects the reception of the novel. Can we rely on everything we learn from Anna? How does this allow for the element of surprise with regard to the actions of other characters? Another technique used to give us insight into her character and thoughts is Anna's letter exchange between herself and her family and Biddy in England. As her name suggests, Anna is honourable and honest. Anna is a Quaker who leaves England for America with her sister after Anna's fiancé leaves her for someone outside of the Quaker community. She battles to cope with the sympathy she receives and decides to go with her sister who is going to Ohio to marry Adam Cox. Although it is tempting to assume that she is perfect, Anna's character is fleshed out by her derision of the American appliqué quilting, which she feels is inferior to the quilting she does. She also believes that she is the best seamstress, and even though it may be true, it is contrary to the humble Quaker woman she presents herself as. She is also critical of Abigail's homemaking skills. That said, her principles are admirable as she defies her new family in order to help escaping slaves and demonstrates tenacity despite her position as a woman in a patriarchal America that she herself is only getting to know. Grace is Anna's sister and is the more vivacious of the two. She is also the adventurous one and decides to go to Adam Cox in America to start a new life. En route, she develops yellow fever and dies before reaching her destination. Anna has to be strong as she nurses her dying sister, even when relegated to the luggage space because they cannot risk infecting the other passengers. Anna is matter-of-fact about much of the hardship they suffer, which again demonstrates her tenacity. Belle is Anna's first real friend in America, and the two women bond over their shared gift of sewing. Belle makes hats and bonnets, and Anna is able to help Belle while she waits for Adam to fetch her. Belle is much more worldly than Anna, and much of the humour in the novel comes from her pithy observations and remarks. She appears to be dying from cirrhosis of the liver or some other liver disease. She has a yellow pallor and drinks to excess. Her loyalty to Anna provides her with a haven twice in the novel, but it cannot be permanent as Belle knows she is dying, so she knows that she cannot look after Anna forever. Her brother, Donovan, is the slave hunter for whom she attempts to compensate by helping with the Underground Railroad. Donovan is a rogue who is instantly attracted to Anna. He takes the key to her chest and does not return it. Perhaps he hopes he will win the key to her heart, given time, but there's never any chance of this, as Anna cannot marry outside of her community. He is a slave hunter, a drunk, and is crude. Belle is his older sister, so he affords her a small measure of respect, but suspects her involvement in the Underground Railroad and constantly harasses her to try and catch escaping slaves. He believes Anna can save him from himself, but the moral appears to be that we are all responsible for our own redemption. Jack is a young Quaker who falls in love with Anna and they marry. He saves her from an untenable situation with Adam and Abigail and the very patriarchal society of friends. He genuinely seems to love her, but their beliefs clash over the slave issue, and in the end this almost destroys their marriage. He is the man of the household, but often defers to his mother, who is a strong matriarch. Both Judith, his mother, and Belle are autonomous women, and they are autonomous because they've both been married, but Belle's husband's deserted her and run off, and Judith is a widow. So the only way to become autonomous is um, to lose your husband in some way, whereas Anna's never been married until she married Jack, and so of course doesn't have uh, any autonomy or agency in her own life. Mrs. Reed is a fascinating character. She has a daughter whom we don't meet, but we do meet her grandchild when Anna visits her home. She is a black woman who escaped slavery years prior to the events in the novel, which is of critical importance at the novel's climax. Anna does not know much about black people and finds herself surreptitiously trying to observe them to learn more. Black people become more human to her as she gets to know the escaping slaves and Mrs. Reed and by holding her grandchild. Virginia is an escaping slave whom Anna helps more than once. She escapes with her help and then realizes she cannot live free without her babies, and so runs back the other way to fetch them. Anna and Virginie spend time hiding out together in ditches at night, becoming closer in the process. 
Anna assists one of her babies near the end of the novel, sleeping next to her to hide her at great risk to herself. She learns a lot about empathy and the moral correctness of helping slaves escape bondage from her encounters with Virginie. Adam strikes a somewhat pitiful figure as a man approaching middle age with the beginning of a bald patch. He loses his brother and wife-to-be in quick succession, is saddled with honour, and battles to turn a real profit in his fabric shop. His circumstances eventually improve when Honor leaves and he marries Abigail, but he does not strike one as having any bite backbone. He is a good man, but not an admirable one. From Honor's perspective, we learn that Abigail is not much of a homemaker, and Belle tells her that she is jealous of Honor based on her own observations. Whether or not these observations are fair or true, it is hard to tell. She has just lost her husband and is possibly depressed. Judith is Jack's mother and a formidable Quaker matriarch, as mentioned previously. She has considerable clout in the community, and even though Jack marries Honor, she remains in charge and Honor feels like an interloper. Dorcas, the, um, Jack's sister and Judith's da uh, daughter, only warms to Honor when she becomes mute after tra a traumatic incident, and then she becomes a better sister-in-law, speaking for her and trying to be kinder. Themes Freedom and Bondage the most obvious reflection of this is the escaping slaves. However, there are other examples. Anna is imprisoned in America, unable to go home, and attains freedom through marriage. She fights for freedom again when she's so traumatized that she stops speaking. Donovan is eventually freed from his inner demons by his sister, instead of by Anna as he had hoped. Conscience and religion. The ideals of the Quaker faith are compromised by prejudice. There is a pew for black people in the Philadelphia meeting place, demonstrating their racism. Jack is also forced to help Donovan catch a slave because of a law which makes it hard to know what is right and what is wrong. Anna chooses her conscience over her family's wishes. There is this constant tension between what one should do as there are areas of grey muddying the issues. Patriarchy versus woman power. The Quakers excommunicate members who do not live according to their strictures. There is no real freedom for unmarried women, except Judith, who attains her freedom because she is a widow, as mentioned. That said, women are not without power. Anna uses silence to exercise hers, and Belle is a divorcee who can live the life she wants to live. Virginia and Mrs. Reed show incredible resilience escaping slavery, Virginia more than once. Symbols Many names are symbolic in the novel. Anna is honourable, and her daughter Comfort is comforting and named after a comforter or quilt. Quilting is an important motif. The Quaker quilts are more painstakingly rendered and, for honour, reflect more skill. Applique is easier and more cheerfully bright with reds and greens and reflect the newness of America and the fact that they do not have the luxury of spending hours on quilting. Mrs. Reed's block quilt is made up of scraps from her life, including her husband's quote, quote The quilts are metaphors for life. Silence. Women find strength in silence, much like Maya Angelou did. Honor has a period of silence, and Mrs. Reed decides not to speak when Donovan arrests her. Silence in the meeting of friends helps them to find their inner light and to commune with God. Hats and bonnets. The Quakers wore simple bonnets that did not draw attention to them. Bell makes unusual bonnets that capture something of the wearer's personalities. Mrs. Reed wears a straw bonnet that she trims with flowers from her own garden. They give the reader insight into the wearer's personality and reflect the wearer's station and beliefs. Thank you.